and please state your name and affiliation. We'll start with David Pascal, then we'll go to Jimmy Himes. Mike, I'm curious. Um, Josh was saying earlier, just SEC experience was really important. And I know you and Rodney and Willie all worked under Coach Rick at Georgia. I know Rodney and Willie were ahead of you, but why do you view SEC? Why is SEC experience so important in this league? Well, it's a, it's a whole different deal. I've coached in all Power Five conferences, um, been in the SEC a total of five years, three at LSU and three at Georgia, or two at Georgia, excuse me. And to have that experience, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's just different. It's different than the Big 12. It's different than the ACC. And, you know, it's the deep end of the pool. Jimmy. Uh, Mike, Jimmy Himes with Sports Animal in Knoxville. Could you kind of give us an idea of what you want your special teams units to look like? One thing that, um, that we'll do is, is we'll play our tails off. And we're going we're gonna to be all about technique. And we're going to play hard. And, and um, we're going to play clean. What do you feel like you have with the skilled position players you've inherited? Just having watched every clip the last year of their special of our special teams, really feel like they really have a have a good foundation and a good culture from a special team standpoint. The guys played hard. Um, I think we've got some good, really good skilled players, and I'm excited to get out there in spring practice and work with them. Ben McKee and Austin Price. Coach Ben McKee of Rocky Top Insider, from the outside linebacker perspective, uh, just what have been your initial thoughts of, of the guys you have inherited there and what will kind of be your main focus those first couple of weeks of the spring practice? Well, really, I've seen them on the field only one time, just having gotten here last week and watching them on film last year. Excited. I think we've got a lot of talent there, got some speed. I'm just excited to get out there in spring practice and work with them and, and see these guys develop. Coach, and watching your Twitter activity over the weekend, uh, you're recalling your first game coaching a Neal in 2005. What was it about that game? And then take me through kind of maybe what you see as a difference in, in maybe Neyland Stadium versus some of the other big venues you've coached in because you've coached in quite a few. Sure. Well, I just remember walking in there. First of all, you walk in that stadium and it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, it, it's incredible. It's all symmetrical and just it, it's it's probably one of the most breathtaking just structures you've been in. Then you toss in 103,000 people and they start singing Rocky Top and and it just it's an electric environment. I remember I was up in a press box at the time and and the things like shaking and swaying and and um, it was it was pretty awesome. So ever since that, I think we ended up coming out on top where I was in overtime. But um, it was an unbelievable battle, and just have a uh, just had a great experience. Blake Topmeyer, then David Ubbin. Yeah, Mike Blake Topmeyer with the Knoxville News Sentinel. Uh, I was wondering, is it a, a true story or, or an urban legend that that you and Jeremy Pruitt got into a fight when you guys were on staff together there, Georgia? Um, you know what? Uh, only thing I'll say about my experience at Georgia is um, worked for Mark Richt, an unbelievable guy, and really had a, a, a great experience working for him. For him, incredible person. Um, and you know, I'm just excited about what we're doing here. And uh, I'll follow up in a different direction. Uh, you're someone who's worked on, on the defensive side of the ball uh, at a lot of places, but now gotten into kind of this, this special teams thing. Why is that a direction you wanted to take your career? And, and what do you think it takes to make a good special teams coach? Well, going back, when they added the 10th coach, that's really when I decided to go the special teams route. Because I'd always gone, you know, linebackers, defensive coordinator, and so forth. And I've always loved special teams. But at that point, a lot of head coaches hadn't put the emphasis on it. And I saw it as an opportunity. You know, that's, that's kind of how I made my name when I, as a player. And I love that aspect of it. You get to coach every single player on the team. And it's all – you get to teach them the – every – I call it transferable skill. So a kickoff, for example, it's no different 
we'll, we'll pull a clip of a receiver stemming a corner, stepping on his toes, running a post cut. Guys, that's all you're doing. It's the same thing. We'll pull a clip of a linebacker setting up a block and, and look him in the eyes and sticking him. And, and it's all about space. It's all about where's the ball, where's the block, how much space do I have, teaching them relationships. So to sum it up, it's you're teaching your entire team the whole fundam, all the fundamentals of ball. So that's what I really enjoy, working with every player and getting out there. And, and um, the other thing that it's fun about it is you got one shot at this. You know, it's not like offense, not like defense where you have three opportunities. You got one shot. So your chili better be hot. You better be ready to rock and roll. And, and I enjoy that because I, I wake up about 3 a.m. every day and, and uh, I don't need a cup of coffee. I'm ready to go. David. Uh, yeah, Mike, do you, uh, do you anticipate, I guess, I don't know if having access is the right word, but using starters uh, on your special teams unit, either as return men or, um, you know, gunners and those kind of things? In, in the past where I've been, um, we haven't used a lot of starters. And, and here's the reason. You take you, – you have an opportunity to develop your whole entire roster. And you have an opportunity to leave – some tread on the tire, so to speak, of your starters. But we're going to do, we're going to use exactly who we have to, or who we need to, um, to be, you know, to be the best in the conference. So I don't know what that looks like right now. And that's a part, that's a fun part of spring ball. Our job uh, as a special teams coordinator, my job is to identify every single player on our roster, identify their skill sets. And that's what we'll do. And, and we'll plug them in. Trey Wallace and Eric Kane. Uh, Trey Wallace, Rocky Top Insider. I, I spoke with one of your former players last week in Will Compton, and he he, oh, he, yeah. started, he started to to get into the stories of your recruiting tactics and, and what you did at Nebraska when it comes to that last in home visit of showing him a tattoo on on your arm. I, I'm interested to to hear what it's like for you to to be on the road. What are you trying to preach, kids? Uh, and if you can, can you finish that story on how your 24 mile run in Lincoln ended? Oh yeah, that was uh, well, first of all, just in recruiting, um, I just, you know, it's, it's about connecting with these kids and as a coach, once you connect with them and, and once they understand and they get here in, in the former players, like a Will Compton, I mean, I told Will when he stepped foot on, on campus, and I've told every player this, that, guys, it's my job as a coach to earn your respect. And so let me be clear about that. You know, I've, if I can't make you the best linebacker in Will's case in the country, then I'm worthless to you. That's my job. And so then it's my job to earn your trust. And what that happens over time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen in the fourth quarter when, you know what, it's a fan and, and we're down against Auburn, and how? what am I going to do? Am I going to point a finger? Am I going to point a thumb? You know, are we in this together, or are we really in it together? So that takes time. And then after you get those two components, the third thing, once they figure out, once you figure out, I actually care about you, I love you, now we got something. So in the recruiting process, it's really conveying that to, to the recruits and, and getting in front of them and and, and really just getting to know them on a personal level, getting to know their families and, and know who they are and, and what they're about. And to finish the story on, on the run, um, uh, it, it, all right, so we, we were practicing. It was spring practice. We had a Friday practice. It was not one of our best practices. My wife and kids were out of town. They're actually in St. Louis. And I told our guys we had an early morning scrimmage in, in Memorial Stadium on Saturday. I said, hey, fellas. We're going to have the greatest practice in the history of Nebraska football today. I said, when we do, so I'm going to go run a marathon. And lo and behold, I mean, Levante, David, and Will Compton, and a bunch of other dudes out there just wrecking shop. We had an unbelievable practice. So after practice, we go, and we had a, a bunch of boosters there. So we had a big barbecue. And so we're under a stadium eating barbecue. And then one of my good friends, Joe Moglia, who was with us, he was a, he's the CEO of TD Ameritrade, went on to become the head coach at Coastal Carolina. He lived in Omaha, and 
So you take I-80 from Lincoln, Omaha, and I said, hey, Joe, we dropped me off. And so he dropped me off 27 and a half miles away from the stadium on I-80. It was 90 degrees out. I will admit, though, there was a wind at my back. And so I just I took off, started running. I, all I had was a little um, uh, little a little headset, and and I had my GPS, you know, with my that tracked how your splits and so forth. So I got to running. I think I was 23 and a half miles in, and I hear these sirens come up behind me, and it scared the heck out of me now because I'm just running on the shoulder of the interstate, and I look behind me, and it's a police officer pulling me over. And he said, he goes, he goes, son, what are you doing? I said, officer, I'm running a marathon. He goes, you can't run out of here. I said, what do you mean? He goes, it's illegal. And so it made me get in a police car and I'm sitting in there. I didn't have a shirt on. I was, I was sweating like Moses Malone in the fourth quarter. And so I get in there and, and, um, and I look in the mirror and it looked like I had rabies. Because it was 90 degrees out. I'd been running 22 and a half miles. I had cotton mouth like you couldn't believe. And so he said, give me your name. And I said, Mike Eckler. And he goes, Coach Eck? He goes, what are you doing, man? And, and I, I told him. And he goes, I said, Officer, how far am I for the 56th Street exit? He said, you're two miles away. I said, that's where I'm turning. That's where I'm going to the stadium. I said, just let me finish. He said, I can't do that. I'll, I can get fired if you get, if you get hurt. So I said, well... So I am kind of tired. How about if you just give me a ride back to the stadium then? <laughs> so that's how it ended. So I never finished it. Thank you. Last question, Brent. Yeah, Co Coach Eckler kind of following up a little bit on that. Where, where does your intensity come from? I mean, obviously you're known for, for your intensity. Where, where does that stem from? What What's kind of brought that out of you as a young age? And why have you been able to consistently carry that through your career, regardless of where you're at or what you're doing? I think it's just DNA, you know, I think it's um, how, just how you're wired as a person. It's no different than everybody's got a different coaching style, right? Everybody's got a different personality. And I just, it, I just happen to enjoy Red Bull and, and that's kind of how I coach. All right, thank you, coach. Appreciate y'all.